Hello and welcome to my second video on progressions and in this video we're going to discuss song mode. So as you can see here I already have a chord palette with a number of chords which I've chosen to start building a song. And as you can hear we've already assigned a couple of instruments to those. Uh, we've covered that in the previous videos. Uh, so the first thing you need to do is enable song mode and uh, we do that by pressing the song button up in the top right corner. Now the whole idea of song mode is to take a selection of these chords which may not be in any preferred order and um, chain them together to create a complete song. Now to open the actual song chain window just long press the song button and this floating window will appear which can be dragged around wherever you want it. Now there are multiple ways to add uh, chords to a song chain. I'm going to go over uh, as many of them as I can in this video. Now this is a scrolling list so it can be quite lengthy if need be. And uh, the way you uh, do this is to select a chord and then simply press the add button at the bottom of the um, song sequencer window. And we can simply repeat this process as many times as required. Now if you spent time arranging your chord palette and have a perfect order of chords there, you can just simply long press the add button, it will add everything for the chord palette uh, to the song chain. As you can see there, there was 18 chords added. But let's just undo that because that's not really what I want here. So let me add um, four chords uh, to this song chain. Uh, this, this time I'm just going to tap hold and then drag the chords uh, from the uh, chord um, palette window directly into the song chain. So this is another way of doing what we did previously with the add button. Now if we tap on the column headers within the song window you can hear the uh, chords sound. So you can get an idea of which chord is in which position and what they sound like. So now we have a set of chords within the song sequencer window. If we enable the sync, the host sync button and press play on the host transport uh, that chord sequence will play back and because loop mode is enabled at uh, the top right of this window uh, it will keep repeating the sequence. Now as you can hear here it's also playing in whatever play mode I select. Uh, there's nothing within this song sequence yet to, uh, to uh, force it to, uh, to select a specific play mode but you can do that and we'll talk about that later. Now I should quickly mention that all these uh, chords we added are four me measures in length. Uh, we can change that just by selecting a particular chord and using the plus and minus length buttons to change that. Now in my case I actually want four measures per chord so let's just rewind that. Now if we want to take that section and duplicate it we can just simply uh, drag a selection uh, under the actual uh, header, the chord header and uh, select the, the four chords we've got and hit the copy button. We can then just touch anywhere within that song chain and hit the paste button to paste that set of chords in place. Now if we go back to the drag and drop operation as uh, I showed you earlier, if you uh, take any chord and drag it to the end of the song chain, it will append it. But if you drag a chord over an existing chord, it will overwrite that chord. If you drag a chord and you um, position it with between two chords, it will insert the chord. Now we could have achieved exactly the same thing by selecting a chord and then pressing the insert button or alternatively selecting a chord and pressing the replace button. Um, but either way, whichever you choose, it's just two ways to achieve the same thing. Okay, so now I have three garbage chords on the end of my song chain. So to remove them, just swipe across those chords and hit the cut button. Now suppose you want to assign play modes to different positions within that song chain. For instance, if I select position 1 in that song chain 
uh, and then press the uh, style button in the bottom right corner of the song window it will apply a style to that particular position and if I move to position 5 and then change to the arpeggiator and hit the style button again you'll see a style assigned and if I rewind and start playback you'll see that um, it can switch between styles uh, once it hits uh, chord position 5 So obviously you can see when you look at this song chain that positions 1 and 5 have styles applied. Now if you want to remove a style from a position you just simply select that position and then hit the style button again. And when you hit the style button a second time the style is removed from that uh, particular position. Now if I hit the style button again you'll see the style is reapplied. Now applying a style is a lot more than just changing the play mode. If you look at column 5 uh, next to the uh, play length you'll see a little B in brackets which stands for a bass note. Now I can turn and that bass note on and off at any point in the song. Just uh, simply turn it off in the interface and reapply the style using the style button. Now the app that was enabled during playback was app A but we could quite easily have gone to the app view and selected any app, uh, any alternative app here and uh, when we apply that style we can switch between apps A to F. Now not all interface elements are available as styles but quite a lot of them are so see the manual for that. Now if you're unsure what is being assigned as a style just simply tap on the column header and as you'll see here the bass note button will uh, turn off and on as we flick uh, between uh, columns with styles. Now one important thing that is applied with a style is the output channel. So if we open the output channel window uh, we can um, specify a different output channel for both the bass and the app and strum etc. Um, at a particular position and that works great uh, when we want to bring in other instruments so uh, as you can see here I'm assigning um, uh, a different um, a, a different output channel to columns 1 and 5 and you probably noticed there that there was uh, strings and piano uh, when I clicked on uh, column 5 and only piano on column 1 now if you're using AUM uh, the routing is awesome so it, we could look at maybe uh, pure piano we can see it's uh, reacted to port 1 and all 16 MIDI channels whereas BS16 which is playing the strings is also uh, on port 1 uh, but is uh, ignoring channel 1. So if we return to progressions and play that back you'll notice when it starts playing it's only playing the piano uh, on channel 1 uh, and of course because the strings are ignoring channel 1 uh, it only comes in when we toggle to channel 2 in which case both are playing but notice it's lost that oomph because the bass is turned off uh, at position 5 now when you apply styles to a song uh, they will force those interface elements to change whenever the song is playing. If you want to remove the styles from everything in the song just tap and hold on the style button and a pop-up will appear asking you whether you want to remove the styles. Now one really really important thing to note is whenever you copy a chord to the, to the song chain that chord is copied in its entirety and is free of the song chain which means if you were to edit that particular uh, chord within the song chain it's editing that chord and not the chord pad. So if I hit the edit button in the top right corner of this uh, this window, this song chain window I'm editing the currently selected chord and I can add and remove notes and notice that the note, the chord of the chord palette is not changing to signify that the chord is modified. Now also note that I'm using the preview button in the top right corner to preview this currently edited chord. Now if I go back to the actual toolbox and just tap on uh, the D chord 
uh, you'll notice that it's 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 showing the same notes uh, that it originally had um, meaning that the, the the copy in the song chain is an entirely different copy so even if I um, generate a new chord palette it doesn't alter the song chain now I can drag a chord from the chord palette and drop it back in the tool palette and if I tap on that D chord you'll hear it sound and you can see the notes appear in the piano roll now if I make a selection of that second set of chords and hit the cut button uh, I'll have copied those chords to the clipboard now if I move to say position 12 within the song chain and it paste you'll notice that it's added a load of empty slots between uh, uh, 4 and, and 12 now if we play back this sequence you'll notice that once it gets past column 4 we'll hear nothing now from uh, from column 5 all the way up to column 11 and as soon as we hit column 12 uh, it will resume playback so this is a great way of um, making a, a pause in playback uh, uh, to account for other instruments maybe in your song now you can also add empty slots uh, using some of the interface buttons uh, at the bottom of this window so you can simply press the empty button to add an empty slot to the end of the song chain or we can select a column position by tapping on the header and then hitting the clear button so I want to finish off this video with a couple of useful tips now obviously um, when you are generating chords to use within a song uh, it might be that there's specific chords that you just detest that you do not like and you do not want them generating ever again so if I pick the uh, the highest complexity level here and then attempt to generate a set of chords and I just uh, audition a few of these um, you may find an odd one that you do not like and that F9 plus 13 chord there just grates with me and yes I can swipe up and I can apply different variations I can even edit the chord if I want and make it try and make it sound a little better but if all else, all else fails and you really want those chords removed from any chord sequence then you can go into second settings and uh, select preferred chords and then you can go find that particular chord type and you can turn it off within settings and once a chord's turned off in here uh, whenever you generate a new set of chords uh, it will never ever be recreated or it certainly wouldn't be created uh, within this session now if you want those uh, settings to stick and you do not want that chord to be generated in any session you create from now on you can go in here and select uh, save defaults and then whenever we go in and we uh, create a new session um, those default uh, preferred chords will be applied to that newly created session so that's a couple of very useful tips there and I'm sure that they will come of, uh, become uh, useful to you now be aware that existing projects you will probably need to uh, disable those chords uh, there too but whenever you create a new session uh, those preferred chords will be applied so that's just about it for this uh, tutorial uh, the next one will most likely be um, on the app and strum editor so look out for that one but don't forget to thumb up the, uh, the video and uh, subscribe to the channel for more tutorials which will be coming soon Thanks for watching.